Welcome to the Armchair Generals. Given that this is our first video, we thought we'd take some time to introduce, our, introduce ourselves, talk a little bit about our, our experiences with Warhammer 40k, how we got into it, what it's meant to us, and the impact it's had on our lives. We'll also talk a little bit about some of the subjects we're going to cover in other videos in the future on this channel. And with that out of the way, I'm Crash. I'm El Scacho. This is Nova Star here. And we want to welcome you to the Armchair Generals channel. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get into it. Nova, why don't you tell us a little bit about how you were introduced to the world of tabletop miniatures? So the, my very first introduction to uh, Warhammer in general was around 97, 98. We were driving by a comic book store, and I wanted to pick up Song of the Hedgehog comic books. And we went in. Uh, it was a store in Gulf Breeze, Florida called Bix Heroes. Unfortunately, it's not there anymore. And that's where I first saw Warhammer. And the very first thing that caught my eye was the 5th edition Lizardman Army book. It's such good, iconic art, and it just blew me away. It absolutely blew me away. Those old fantasy codexes were great. Yeah. Yeah, I think it had a... Um, it was a... The pterodon was up on the front. There were skinks in the Hoda. They were holding some severed heads, and there were Saurus warriors to the side of it. it. It was just amazing. Had the big stegodon, didn't it? Yeah, that's another pterodon. Stegodon, thank you. Stomping towards the cover. Yeah, and just was a, it must have been fourth grade, fourth fifth grade. It just blew me away. I was just like, wow. And then it kind of died down. Because like your parents, my parents were very, very religious and they saw this and eventually started reading her like chaos, demons. Uh oh boy, you're not reading that. So then the next experience with Warhammer really came with when your dad took you into book and game. So this is kind of uh gonna piggyback on yours too. You got some things, I'll let you describe what you got and you brought that to your house, and I came over, and we're like, whoa, what's this? And then you took me to booking game the next weekend. I saw the Space Wolves Army book for third edition, and it was just over from that point. Space Vikings. Uh, That's, they They knocked me out, guy at the bookstore inserted the GW chip into the back of my head, and it's been beeping ever since. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, just to, to connect to that, I mean, that was my introduction to 40K was, was talking to you about it. You had uh, shown me the th third edition rule book. And towards the back, there's a picture of a gene stealer reaching out with its claws towards the, uh, towards the viewer. And I was a big StarCraft player at the time. And I saw that and was like, sir. And uh, little did we know. And uh, right. <laughs> And that's what pulled me in was that I, when I went to the game store, I wanted to play Tyranids. And I looked at the Tyranids. I loved the way they looked. I missed the old alien xenomorph vibe from the third edition. It's a lot. But um, the guy at the game store that was at Book and Game Emporium in Fort Walton Beach, Florida, uh, he convinced my dad, because I was 14 at the time, I didn't really have the kind of money to buy a Space Marine Battle Force, uh, which is what I ended up getting. But um, he convinced my dad not to let me play Tyranids because he said they were not a beginner army and they were too complicated. I would lose and quit the game. And my dad listened to him and made me pick Space Marines. I wanted to play Chaos Marines. And he said, no, your mother will kill me because at that <laughs> um, Nova's parents and my parents were uh, rather heavily entrenched in uh dogmatic levels of faith and it was the same thing demons nah my dad didn't care too much but my mom would have lost her mind so i was looking at dark angels and i was looking at space wolves and dark angels just felt cooler to me that whole knights templar monastic warrior vibe from that third edition cover just pulled me in and yeah kind of the same thing insert gw chip and little did you know you chose chaos anyway right <laughs> all right well i have been playing a little bit longer than uh crash nova i started in tail end of 95 or 
very early 96. Uh, I was in high school, uh, freshman year, and my buddy Nick um, was obsessed with word bearers. Um, he had the John Blanche uh, old uh, how to paint guy that was looked like it was on a piece of parchment. Just, you know, John Blanche's scribblings and horror. Well, sorry, I won't dog on him too much, but his particular style of art all over the page, their iconography and everything. And he wanted somebody to play with. So I went and actually Vix Heroes uh, in Gulf Breeze was the first shop that I ever really went to. Um, and I started off with just getting the how to paint kit. Uh, had the four snap together Marines and the Ultramarines colors. And I didn't like the Ultramarines colors at all. Um, and so I uh, quickly converted them to Blood Angels. And so my first 40K army was Blood Angels. Um, I, after that, I saved up money because I had a job, got a battle force, uh, and then on down the road, I just played with that a little bit for a long time, just mostly just building, painting, and repainting, and stripping, and painting, trying to get better at the painting aspect. And finally, I went into TBS Comics uh, looking for model tanks to build because I just wanted to build model tanks and the ball predator had just come out. And so I got a ball predator to go with my blood angels and I had some rhinos and I was a big fan of the rhino rush there uh, for was, a while. Was that the plastic metal hybrid kit? Yep. Yeah. Yep. That horrible, 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 hard to put together <laughs> ball predator kit <laughs> from back in the day. Kids. They were terrible. To be um, fair, the later one that came out wasn't much better. No, but at least it wasn't all or three quarters metal. So, anyhow, um, after that, um, I kind of stepped back, stepped back a little bit. I dabbled with Black Templars for a time, E Wild, and on to Space Wolves. Been playing Space Wolves ever since. And then it's really just kind of been juggling Space Wolves, Imperial Guard, and Orcs. Um, and um, I've had almost every Imperial faction I had, except for Sisters of Battle and Ultramarines. Um, tried Eldar a few times, um, but never got around to playing any Chaos. Mostly just want to paint them sometimes, but never enough to buy a whole army worth. <laughs> and then Fantasy and my Dwarves. Cool miniatures. What's that? Chaos has always had pretty cool miniatures. Yeah, it's just every once in a while I see a cool one that I really want to paint, but I don't want a whole army worth. It's for in fantasy for some reason. I really like the fantasy chosen of chaos army and dwarves, of course. Um, haven't tried Age of Sigmar yet, but uh, every once in a while, maybe I'll get around to it eventually. Models are really cool, but uh, that's about all it's got going for it. I mean, it's 40k, but fantasy style to me, so... I mean, we did like one test game, two test games. Yeah. But that definitely, was... Definitely different if you're used to the old style rank and file. Yeah. I and it. I'm more of a casual player, so it's more about what I can do to make the minis look cool and and make a story, even if it's just in my head, of, about the game versus whether or not they're super effective. So I will buy things like been raising wolves and not use them in an old, you know, wolf bomb or whatever that uh, bomb was back in seventh ed and eighth edition or before eighth edition. The old Death Stars, uh, the Bark. Yeah, Death Stars, that Bark Star. Uh, I had a bunch of thin region wolves, but no interest in the Bark Star, so I never used it. But anyhow, um, this game has also helped me cope with divorce, so it's been kind of back, kind of there for me when. Uh, the rest of the world didn't seem like it was just me and my friends and the game. So I, uh, you know, and it's always there whenever I've moved because I've moved a lot. So. Um, so you mentioned being a casual player, and that is something that we all kind of bring to the table is a little bit different perspective. Nova does play casual, but he's much more of a competitive player. He's got a lot of history with competitive play. Um, the LVO, working with Frontline Gaming, being on Team Zero Comp. Now he's on Team Backward Kid. Wrong Way Kid. Wrong Way Kid. 
Um, I am more mixed. I do like the competitive play, um, but it's not everything for me. I like casual play as well. I'll do cheesy armies, you know, built to win. And I'll do more thematic armies built to, you know, have a more narrative game. And then El Scacho brings a much more casual perspective. He very rarely plays in tournaments. Um, and he just loves the Lord to build thematic armies that really fit with an army's flavor and history. Um, so we do bring three very different perspectives to the game, very different histories with the game. Um, now, uh, just to circle back to finish up the our introductions to the game, I did for yet I actually had an introduction to 40k slightly before I moved to Florida. Um, I had a friend in school in seventh grade named Carlos Ortiz. This was in Waseca, Minnesota. And he brought the second edition pack of Space Marine uh, Paint It Yourself, the one you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, I and had that one too. Those, those second edition Marines. And he brought that in. And again, we were StarCraft. I was a StarCraft player, so were my friends. And we looked at it and we were like, those are just knockoff StarCraft Marines. And he was like, no, <laughs> it's been around a long time. And we were like, no, it's just knockoff StarCraft. And he was like, no, it's not. And uh, I wish I only could... you knew the truth back then. <laughs> I wish I could go back. I wish I could find him for him a little bit. I wish I could reach out to him and be like, you had no idea what I was getting. <laughs> but, uh. um, okay, we're going to go ahead and pause here for just a moment. We'll be back with part two. Um, for now, though, we want to thank you for watching part one of our introduction video. Uh, if you like this video and want to see more from us, uh, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notifications so you get notifications when we put up new videos. Thank you, everybody. This has been Armchair Generals. Remember, death to the false emperor.